Hey guys, Spud here, and today I wanted to discuss some awesome new quality of life updates that Eagle Dynamics has brought to DCS World as of the last open beta update. Now with that update, of course, we also got some fantastic fixes and small but important additions to the F-15E Strike Eagle, but we'll take a look at those in a later video. So first off, let's head to the mission editor here and discuss a really awesome new update to the mission editor that will be a massive time saver for mission designers and especially multiplayer mission designers. So the new feature here is we can now copy all the properties of one aircraft or group of aircraft to all the same aircraft type that is placed on the map here in the mission editor. So let's take a look at how it works. All we got to do is let's go ahead and zoom in on Vermont David Airfield here. And why don't we place in a couple of Strike Eagles on the ramp here. We're using Strike Eagles today because there's quite a few special options available to that aircraft that will make it a good example for today's uh, topic. So we'll select our F-15 ES4+. We'll plop one on the map here. And we'll set the skill level to client because we're making a, a, a multiplayer mission today. We'll set the name to F15I Group 1. I highly recommend, guys, that as you're creating multiplayer missions, especially that end up having tons and tons of groups, that you end up, uh, you should always right away give things clear and easy to understand labels. So that way you don't lose units or lose jets as you're creating multiple, multiple groups of aircraft for all of your clients. So uh, now that we have that selected, we'll go ahead and set him to take off on the ramp here. We'll go over to our payload section. Takes a second for the model viewer to load a little bit there. So um, we'll go ahead and give this aircraft a payload. So why don't we scroll down to, I've got, probably got a preset payload in here to use. There we go. Uh, one CFT full of six Mark 82s, the other full of four GBU 12s. We got three AMRAMs and a single Sidewinder on there. Why don't we go ahead and change this over to another Sidewinder? So we got two Sidewinders, two AMRAMs on this F-15E slash F-15I. And shout out to the creator of this skin. This is a much more authentic F-15I skin, in my opinion. Um, I'm forgetting your name at the moment. And in case you do see this video, see the little lines that you have on the uh, ray dome of the F-15E here? You can actually get rid of those if you find the correct layer in the uh, skin file and recolor that correct layer. You will no longer have those weird little outlines that is created in the um, skin template. But aside from that, why don't we also give this aircraft a couple of payload restrictions? Why don't we restrict um, everyone from being able to load AMRAMs on the inner pylons there, so that way we have a multiplayer mission where not everyone is toting around for a 120 AMRAMs the entire time. So now let's go ahead and go on over to our special options tab over here, additional aircraft options. Why don't we equip this aircraft with NVGs and NVG filters? and we'll require our pilots to go through a full GC alignment. And then why don't we go ahead and set some uh, laser codes up. We'll go uh, 1566, and we'll go ahead and control C. We'll copy these guys through the rest of our uh, laser codes for the different stations on our aircraft. And then for our multiplayer, let's uh, create it so that way we have both the pilot and the WIZO are equally responsible. This will allow our pilot and WIZO to trade controls by hitting the C key on their keyboards by default without having to authorize the other person taking control. This is important so that way, say, if uh, you're air-to-air -air refueling and you're drifting a little close to the tanker and your WIZO is worried about a collision with the tanker, he can take control right away and get you away from that tanker or you're flying a uh, nap of the earth and so the is this not liking what's going on? So he can take control and potentially save your guys' life, something of that nature. Whereas if you don't have the aircraft control priority set to equally responsible, when you hit that C key, it's going to pop up a message in the front seater's cockpit that says, will you allow the WIZO to take control of the aircraft? And you have to say yes, um, and then vice versa, of course. 
So this allows everyone to be equally responsible for the aircraft. And then why don't we go ahead and go into our radio options here. Which tab is it? Uh, there we go. There it is. I forgot which icon it was. Interesting. And so let's say we have channel one. Let's go ahead and set that to 305, which is my usual frequency I use for strike on my multiplayer missions. And let's go for a frequency of 255 for the intraflight frequency for this flight. And then let's go 256 and 257 for the other three flights of Strike Eagles for their intraflight frequency. So that'll make things a little bit easier for my pilots to navigate through in order to set the correct frequencies they need. So then the big problem here now is before we had to redo all of those options every single time we place another group of F-15E Strike Eagles on the map or F-A-18s and F-A-18s or P-51s and P-51s, whatever it might be. Now, this new feature allows us to transfer all those options between groups very, very easily. So let's go ahead and we'll increase this group. And we'll set that guy there. And let's plop another group of F-15Es on the map. So we'll go call it F-15I group 2. Again, always labeling my groups so that way I don't lose them as I go through the long process of actually putting together a multiplayer mission with all those different jets out there. We'll set them to take off from the ramp and we will go ahead and increase the number of jets out just like that. And that should be just fine. Now, let's talk about how we can actually transfer all these options to that new group of aircraft. So we click on our original group where we do have all of our settings all set up and ready to rock and roll. We then can click this new little icon just to the right of where the tail number is inputted. This will open up the copy settings menu and it says copy the following settings of F-15I group one, that's the group we wanna copy, two other F-15Es that are on the map. We want to transfer their payload, our radio settings, additional properties, payload restrictions, and the skill level. So the skill level will allow us to set all the aircraft on the map as a client instead of having them default to ace or rookie or whatever they might uh, default to for you. Now, one thing that I have found as I've been playing with this new option is it does help to actually untick all of these and then retick all of these to ensure that all of these actually transfer when you hit the copy button and we can transfer them to all other units in this group, all allied units of this type on the blue side, of course, all units of this type on the map. So let's go for all units of this type on the blue side for now. We'll hit OK, and then we'll check on our next F-15I group here. Now we can see we've got the same loadout on F-15I group two, We've got the same payload restrictions, so we can't load AM120 AMRAMs on the inner missile rails on the wings there. And on our radio presets, looks like the radio presets didn't transfer over. And we've got all of our special options did transfer over as well. So let's see here. Sometimes it does take multiple tries on this. I have noticed that. So radio settings, untick, retick. And just give it a couple of tries here. And once you give it a couple of tries, in my experience so far at least, they do eventually all transfer over. Yep, there we go. 305. And then we've got our 1, 2, 3 radio presets for the radio 2 in our second group of F-15Is. We've got all of our special options are set. The most important one, of course, being equally responsible there for control of the aircraft. Also, we've got our payload restrictions and the proper payload on the aircraft. So that is all ready to rock and roll. So that is the awesome new addition to the mission editor. This is going to save me so much time, guys. I can't even believe how happy I am about this. And uh, so let's move over to the second awesome new addition to DCS World. All right, guys, here we are on the multiplayer screen. So we'll go ahead and find my server here. 
There we go. There's a Spud Knockers mission server from Fox 3. We'll join this bad guy right here. And through the magic of mission editing, and uh, well, through the magic of video editing, that is, we'll go ahead and speed up time here so you don't have to watch us load in. All right, guys, here we are on the multiplayer select role screen, a screen that I am sure you are all intimately familiar with at this point. So and in the past, we had to scroll through all of these different options, which in some multiplayer servers can almost be thousands of different options to find the combination of aircraft type we want, uh, slot we want, like pilot or Rio or Wizzo, um, country we want, airfield we want to start at, and whether or not that slot is already occupied, which is kind of frustrating when you finally find that one slot that matches what you want, and some player is already in there. So the awesome new addition here is the availability of filters up on the top row of the multiplayer select role screen here. So the first option here is availability. So we can say if their aircraft is available, bank it, and whether it is a hot start or a cold start. So let's say an aircraft that's available to us, that it being an aircraft that we actually have bought and downloaded or that we're trialing at the moment, a slot that is vacant, which of course my server here is totally vacant at the moment, but that's totally fine. And whether or not we want a hot start or a cold start. As we can see here, my server at the moment does not have any hot started aircraft, so that pretty much rules out everything. But it's nice to be able to see whether or not anything that is hot started is available to us. Cool, we got that. Now unit type, what kind of aircraft do we want to fly today? Um, let's say we want to fly a F-16, and we can see that there are 40, of 40 available F-16 slots for us here. And let's say we want to be the pilot, which is rather obvious, of course, because we're flying an F-16, so this filter really isn't necessary. And what about the airfield that we want to take off from? Well, let's see. Do we have any F-16s at Lakata Mia? Lakata Mia. I can't pronounce that one. Well, no, we don't have any F-16s at Lakata Mia. No problem. How about over at Basal al-Assad? Well, no F-16s there either. Okay. How about King Hussein Air College? Ah, oh, perfect. We got four F-16s available to us at King Hussein Air College. And then let's say, okay, these are all filled up at King Hussein, or we don't want to actually spawn at King Hussein. Well, we can go up and we can clear out one or multiple of our filters up top by hitting the little X button there. And then let's say we want to actually take off from Ramat David Airfield. And now we can see, oh wow, we've got a whole bunch more F-16s available to us at Ramat David Airfield. And okay, I no longer want to fly the F-16 anymore, but I still want to start at Ramat David Airport. So let's go ahead and get rid of the F-16 uh, filter up there. And now I can see we've got a few different aircraft types available to us. We've got some F-15Cs, some F-16s, some Mirage 2000s, some uh, AGS 37s, and there's our F-16s again. It's really that simple, guys. Let's say uh, one more uh, example here. We want a available, bank it, and cold. Let's say um, we want to be the radar intercept officer in an F-14. Well, looks like there are none available because we don't have any pilots in those slots quite yet. Um, or let's say we want to be a pilot in a F-14A. And we can see we have four of them at Encerlik, and some of them on the Roosevelt, and some on the Forestall. Awesome thing. Awesome stuff here, guys. This is so helpful and so amazing. And it really, really helps you navigate around the multiplayer role select screen. And we no longer have to just scroll endlessly through all of this stuff here. Great stuff. Big thanks to Eagle Dynamics for this. And I can't wait to be able to spawn right off the map like they teased in the last update. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope all this stuff helps you out when it comes to flying in DCS and enjoying DCS, whether you're a mission maker or you just like to hop in and fly. So we'll see you in the next one, guys, and uh, fly safe out there as always.